In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Friends, we gather in prayer this morning, all united in prayer, the whole church united in prayer this morning to celebrate the joy of the resurrection, that Jesus has risen from the dead. And so we celebrate Easter Sunday today. And friends, also at this Mass, it is a second Sunday of the month, and it is the 1030 Mass. Therefore, this will also be, especially since we had a, uh, the special Easter Vigil last night, this will be our children's Mass for the month. Uh, so I will uh, preach to the children at the homily. So children, remember that Jesus Christ is risen today, that he loves you, that he embraces you, that he will never leave you. He proved that to us on Easter Sunday, that no matter what happens, his love is always stronger. His grace will never, ever leave. So brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. You were sent to heal with the tried of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death, and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant we pray that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say his mercy endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the Easter sequence, Christians to the Paschal victim, offer your thankful praises. A lamb the sheep redeems. Christ, who only is sinless, reconciles sinners to the Father. Death and life have contended in that combat stupendous. The Prince of Life who died reigns immortal. Speak, Mary, declaring what you saw, wayfaring. The tomb of Christ who is living, the glory of Jesus' resurrection. Bright angels attesting the shroud and napkin resting. Yes, Christ my hope is arisen. To Galilee he goes before you. Christ indeed from death is risen, our new life obtaining. Have mercy, victor king, ever reigning. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark, and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial claws there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. 
Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed, but they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, kids, happy Easter, okay? Jesus is risen, alleluia. That means that today, just as we heard, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad that today we have every reason to rejoice. We have every reason to have joy because Jesus is risen. And if the more that we understand as we grow older, the more that we understand the resurrection, the more that we understand that what that teaches us is that even when we're having a hard time, even when things are, are tough, that Jesus is stronger, that his love for us never ends, that he is with us, that we can celebrate because Jesus is alive. That's an awesome thing. Kids, I'm so happy to talk to you today in this, our children's mass. And I know, I know that, uh, it's sad that you can't be here in the pews, and that's sad for me too. It really is. You know, because the best part about, about the children's mass is not, uh, is not that I get to use fewer big words in the homily, right? It's that I get to look you in the eye and hopefully to see that you know how much Jesus loves you. So kids, I want to tell you today, and I'm so grateful that I can tell you even this way, just how much Jesus loves you and that he's with you right now. And today we truly do celebrate that he is risen. That's an awesome thing, an awesome, awesome thing. And, you know, we celebrate every Easter, not only that there's this really cool story that happened 2000 years ago. That was a long time ago. Not only that there's this really cool story about how Jesus once rose a long time ago, but that he's alive today. He's alive in heaven and he's alive in the church, which means he's alive in the members of the church. You know who the members of the church are? The members of the body of Christ, the children of God, the living stones of the temple. That's you and me. Kids, he is alive in you. The risen Jesus is alive in you. And the beautiful thing about the, the Easter story, and I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to make another video sort of telling you more of the Easter story later this week. I'm really excited about that. But uh, the beauty of the Easter story is there's all these stories of these different people who get to meet the risen Jesus. They get to meet him face to face. And the thing is, is that the risen Jesus still walks the earth, but not in the same way that he used to. And so people still do get to meet the risen Jesus. You know where he meets the risen Jesus now? In you and me. In the sacraments, in the church. But what are those sacraments for? They're not just things that exist on their own. They exist because of God's grace. But why does he give them in the first place? So that he can live in us. That's what the sacraments are for. That's what your baptism was for. Right? Your baptism was because Jesus is risen in you, right? He lives in you, right? And so every Easter, we remember our baptism in a very special way. That's why you notice, even, even as we rearrange things so that we can get certain things in the camera view, because that's how we have to enter the Mass better right, or differently right now, I brought the, the baptismal font here, right? Any of you were baptized, this baptismal font. Think about that. Right here. You were born again. Right? You were probably still a baby. Maybe some of you a little older. Right? But Jesus gave this incredible gift to his church. You know what? You know, it was, it was one of the last things the risen Jesus did before he ascended into heaven to be with the Father. For all eternity, you know what he did? One of the last things he did is he told his disciples, his apostles, his first priests. He said, 
go into the world making disciples of all nations. And then he said something very important. He said, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And that's why to this day, when we baptize children or adults, anyone that we baptize who hasn't been baptized yet, we baptize them by saying, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And that day that you were baptized, you received a very special life. A very special candle that came from this candle. This candle is called the Easter candle or the Paschal candle. That word Paschal, right? It's It comes from passing over from death into life, right? Because Jesus passed through death into life. He rose again from the dead, right? Okay? So the Paschal candle or the Easter candle, right? That on the day of your baptism, you receive a life from this candle. Now let me tell you a little bit more about this candle. Last night we had the, this big, long, special, the most important and special liturgy of the year called the Easter Vigil. Okay, and the Easter Vigil starts actually outside the church. And it starts outside the church with a fire. And God is so good that he gave, even with the rain last night, um, gave us the ability to have a fire that was contained and safe and put out right afterwards and all of that, but that we, we had our Easter fire. We blessed the Easter fire. So that Easter fire was holy, became holy by the blessing at the beginning of the Easter vigil, right? And it was a symbol of the light of Christ, even in a dark time, even when it's raining, even when everybody's kind of having a hard time, it seems, that the light of Christ is still there. And we blessed that Easter fire, and I took the flame from that Easter fire, and I lit that candle. And later on, as I tried to sing the Gloria, but I couldn't remember the tune, and even this morning I couldn't remember it, so I started just reciting it, but that's okay. Just It's good to have things to laugh about on Easter. Uh, but um, anyway, as I was singing the Gloria, guess what I did? Did I just go light a match? No. I went and I got the candle from the Easter candle. And we lit all the candles on the altar and in front of the altar. And then at the end of Mass, when Jesus had become present on the altar, right? And we took Jesus and we put him in the tabernacle. And at the end of Mass, we light a very special candle that I'm going to turn the camera so you can hear it, see it. <laughs> Can't hear it. But to see that candle, that very special candle is called the sanctuary lamp. Okay. And that's the lamp that tells us that Jesus is present in the tabernacle. So where did I get that candle from? Where did I get that flame from? Did I just go light a match? No. I got it from the Easter candle. And so that candle, the, the sanctuary lamp burned all night. So then this morning when I lit the flames for Mass, when I lit the candles for Mass, what do you think I did? Do you think I lit a match? No. I got on my stepladder. And I got the flame from the sanctuary lamp. Why? Because it came from the Easter fire. And I lit all the candles, including the Easter candle. Right? What is the point of all of this? It's the point of that this candle is here to remind us of something, kids. That the light of Christ, the resurrection, the risen Jesus, shines in you. So kids, I've got a job for you. I need you to let that light shine, okay? I need you to shine it bright. Kids, you have no idea how much power you have. One day you'll understand. But you have no idea how much the world can encounter the risen Jesus by your joy, by your kindness, by your respect to your parents and others, by the trust you show when things are going difficult, right? And you remember Jesus will take care of us. You see, there's the thing about growing up is, is that growing up is a good thing, right? You hear about Growing in maturity, you know, maybe you maybe you hear your older brothers or sisters, hopefully 
uh, you, you hear that they, you know, oh, they're getting so mature, you know, that's, that's good, that's good, that's a good thing. But some other things that happen as we get older is we, we sometimes make things more complicated. And when you notice that you're finding it, you're losing your joy, you're losing your kindness, you're losing your trust, your respect, that's starting to happen, but you can get it back, right? Because you know what Jesus did? Jesus actually told us at one point in the gospel, he told us to be more like kids, right? He said, whoever, uh, of course, now I'm blanking on the exact words, right? But he said, you must have the heart of a child to enter the kingdom of God, right? That heart of a child is when we, when we stop making things so complicated, right? We remember that we can trust Jesus, that we can respect and obey him, not because, not because he just tells us what to do and we just have to, and, and grr, sometimes we don't like to, but we just, we just have to, but because it goes back to that trust, because we can trust that Jesus loves us, he knows what's best, this is also the way that we respect and obey our parents, right? And because we can trust him, that we can have joy. It doesn't mean that we're never sad. It's important to know that it's, it's okay to be sad sometimes, right? It's okay to be sad sometimes. And part of what we do when we're sad is, is that we talk to Jesus about it, right? But that even when we're sad, that that sadness doesn't rule us forever, it doesn't have control over us forever, that we can have joy. Because of that joy, we can show kindness to others. We can show the love of Christ to others. We can be a little less selfish and a little more selfless. Because Jesus, Jesus was the most selfless person. He loved us so much, he gave us his whole life. He laid down his whole life for us on the cross. Then he said, guess what, guys, this isn't the end of the story. He rose again. Because he said, now it's your turn. I want to live in you. So kids, remember the light that you received on the day of your baptism. And if you're not baptized yet, there's this thing called baptism of desire. And it's kind of like our spiritual communion. When, in these days when we haven't been able to go to church, right? We've been talking about our spiritual communion that, that okay, Jesus, I can't receive you in the sacrament. But, Jesus, I want you to live in my heart, right? Raise your hand if you want lead Jesus to live in your heart. I just have this awesome awareness that there's a bunch of hands raised right now. I want Jesus to live in my heart. Guess what? You can do that even if you're not baptized, right? It's called the baptism of desire. Jesus, I want you to be risen in me. Jesus, I want you to live in me. Come and live in my heart. All right? And so we're going to do something very special now at this time, kids, that we do every Easter, and it's awesome, that we remember our baptism. We remember that Jesus came to live in us. And so we renew the promises that we made at our baptism. And the cool thing about this is that most of us were baptized when we were babies. And so because of that, when you were a baby, you couldn't talk yet. You know, if I would have said, do you believe in God the Father? You would have said, ooh, that guy, right? If you would have said anything at all. But today, today, see on that day when you couldn't say it, your parents said it for you. And when they were saying it for you, part of what they were saying is, yeah, I want to help my kids. I, and I promise now, I promise to help my kids to believe in God the Father, to love him, to know that he loves them, to follow him, all of that, right? But today, kids, you get to say the words. Today, you say the words. And it's just two simple words. I do. 
I'm going to ask six questions, okay? And the first questions are about rejecting the lies of the devil. He's the one that causes us to forget to trust Jesus, to forget to, uh, he doesn't cause us to, but he tries to tempt us to, right? We have a free will. That's a whole different story, right? Although it is the same story. Anyway, he's the one who tries to get us to forget to trust Jesus, to forget to respect and obey him, to forget to uh, to have joy because of his resurrection, forget to have hope. He's the one who tries to forget us, to get us to forget to show kindness and love to others. So we're going to first, I'm going to ask you three questions about do you reject him? Do you say no to him? Say no to the devil, right? And you're going to say, I do, three times, right? And then... I'm going to ask you about your trust in God. Okay, so now we know that we now we know what we're not going to do. Now let's talk about what we are going to do. We're going to believe in God the Father. We're going to remember how much he loves us. We're going to believe that he sent his only son, that Jesus became one of us. He died on the cross for us and rose again. We're going to believe in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Catholic Church. We're going to believe that Jesus is still risen that he's alive in the church today. Let's do it. So dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth, by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins. Keep us by your grace. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. Maybe some of you have holy water in your homes. Maybe you don't. I'll talk later about how you can get some. But if you do, maybe take that holy water right now and bless yourself. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now we offer our prayers to our Father in heaven. For the church, may she always be a light of faith and hope for the world to see. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians throughout the world persecuted for their faith, May the risen Lord uphold and strengthen them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who struggle with doubts or temptations, may this Easter bring them renewed confidence and faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who sick, who are sick, lonely, homeless, or outcast, may the risen Christ be for them a source of comfort. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a greater respect for life, may we defend the dignity of each person. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the people of the parish for whom this Mass is being offered. And for all those who have died, may they experience the peace and joy of the risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now let us pause and offer from our hearts our own personal intention. For these special needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the freedom and purification of the church, St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. 
And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. With loving confidence, Heavenly Father, we entrust all of our prayers to you, trusting in your holy will, for you are good and your love endures forever. We ask all of these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, we praise thy name. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the divine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exultant with pastoral goodness, pastoral gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with passable joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending name of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, 
and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting power. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you. Also, for those for whom, to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins, order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray. We bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this. All of you eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The main story of fame, we profane your temple, Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as ones who are pleased, to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, of your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who without sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, 
Ignatius Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever, good and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, we said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. On your stay, we told his peccant on booty, me seven On your stay, we told his peccant on booty, me seven On your stay, we told his peccant on booty. <clears throat> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold, he who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Hallelujah. Therefore, let us keep the feast with the unleavened bread of purity and truth. Hallelujah. <clears throat>
Okay, kids, next is a very important part of our mass, and especially an important part, but in a different way, of our mass in these days where we can't come into the church. Because now is what's called the prayer of thanksgiving, right? And so that's when we thank Jesus for the gift that he comes to live within us, especially when we receive Holy Communion. But in these days when we can't come into the church and receive Holy Communion, we've been praying a spiritual communion. Right. And I talked about that in the homily. Right. It's like the baptism of desire. Right. Where we say, Jesus, I can't receive you in communion right now, but I want you to come and live in my heart. And so we're going to pray that together. Right. And maybe some of you haven't received your first communion yet anyway. Right. And so this is something that you can pray all the time, every time. Right. Uh, and especially uh, while you're waiting to receive your first communion. Uh, but especially also in these days when uh, this is the way that we are all receiving Jesus, right? Together, the whole church, right? That we remember that we want him to live within our hearts. So we're going to pray this special prayer together. I'm going to read it to you so that, so that we can think about the words. And then we'll take a moment and kneel down and talk to Jesus in our hearts. It says, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament, in the Eucharist, in communion. Right? I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. We want Jesus to live within us. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, since we can't receive communion right now, come at least spiritually into my heart. Jesus, come live in my heart. As though you were already there, I embrace you. Think of just sinking into Jesus's arms. He gives you a big hug and you give him a big hug and you just rest in that. You let Jesus hold you tight. Right? And he holds you to his heart. I embrace you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. I unite myself wholly to you. So we don't ever want to leave Jesus's arms. Right? We want to rest and hold on to him. Let him hug us and hold us tight and hold us to his heart. So let's take a moment of quiet prayer and let Jesus embrace us. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me. When you come into your kingdom, Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she come, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. So happy Easter, and I know all our lives are a little different right now, right? All our schedules are a little different, and so I want to take a moment and acknowledge that uh, you know maybe some people are watching this maybe on YouTube or, or what have you maybe later in the week well guess what it's still Easter right and so that's something to celebrate that's something that's always true and this different situation that we have uh, our we find ourselves in now right that 
um, that maybe some people are watching these things at a later day and, and joining in, in prayer in that way at a later day. Uh, it helps us to remember something that's always true, right? That the two biggest holidays of the year, the two most important holy days of the year, Easter and Christmas, both of them, we celebrate it for eight days. We celebrate the actual holiday for eight days, right? It's what's called an octave, right? It's like a, like an octopus that has eight tentacles, although it's instead of a scary sea monster, it's, it's a celebration of Jesus' and resurrection, right? Uh, so the octave, right? The octave of Easter, that it keeps going. So next Sunday, we're going to gather again for the second Sunday of Easter, which is a very special Sunday, one of my favorite Sundays of the whole year, the second Sunday of Easter, not the Sunday after Easter, the second Sunday of Easter. It's also called Divine Mercy Sunday, right? So I hope to see you again then. And if you're watching this later in the week, remember it's still Easter. I also mentioned that I'm going to uh, share a video later this week about um, telling a little bit more of the Easter story for you kids. I'm excited about that. And uh, we're trying to, to put some stuff out there so that we can still talk to you. And, um, and uh, so uh, putting stuff out there for adults, for grown-ups, and for kids, right? Uh, so I've been putting stuff out there for kids. I put out one little kid's story a couple weeks ago, and there's been stuff coming from the atrium, from the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd for the kids. Uh, and uh, like I said, there will be more. So uh, if you're able to tune in and watch those things, um, that's a, a way that we are really happy to be able to be helping you celebrate the resurrection and draw close to Jesus today. Okay? The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Jesus Christ is risen today. Hallelujah. Patronus holy day. Hallelujah. Who did once upon the cross? Hallelujah. Suffer to redeem our loss. Hallelujah! Give us praise and let us sing. Hallelujah! Unto Christ our heavenly Hallelujah! Who endured the cross and grave? Hallelujah! Sinners to redeem and save. Hallelujah.